If you go to Northeastern and you're looking into living off campus, this video is for you. We're gonna break down the different neighborhoods and different options you might wanna look into if you're gonna be looking off campus but still staying close to school. And this video is gonna be helpful whether you're a student, whether you're a parent watching this for your student, and whether you go to Northeastern or somewhere else nearby like MCPHS, Wentworth, Simmons, or Emmanuel. So let's get into it. Hey there, welcome to the channel or welcome back to the channel. My name is Jacob Pystrup. If you live in Boston, if you're moving here, whether you're renting or you're buying, if you wanna learn more about Boston, the city, the suburbs, this channel is for you. And hey, if you're moving to Boston, if you want some help with that process of signing a lease, buying a condo, buying a house, I am a real estate agent here, so the YouTube channel is how I get a lot of my business. If you want help, let's get in touch. Send me an email, send me a text. Let's get in touch. Let's get that process started to help you with that move to Boston or somewhere around Boston. If you go to school here, if you're here for work, let's get in touch and see what I can do for you. So off-campus housing for Northeastern, and this still applies to all the schools around us, MCPHS, Wentworth, BU, I mean, there's a bunch of colleges nearby and there's a lot of students in the area. But of course, I wanna make a video for all my fellow Huskies out there. I think the video might show this backwards, but it's a Northeastern shirt. So always love working with my Northeastern students and their parents when it comes to helping them find a condo, find an apartment, you know, helping them with that process of moving off campus, whether you're by yourself or whether you have a group of friends, always love working with my fellow Huskies. Now, if you're gonna be living off campus and signing a lease, the biggest date you wanna be aware of is September 1st. Now, this is gonna be right before the fall semester starts. And the good news for you is that this is the biggest move-in date for apartments in Boston. And because of that, this is the, the move-in date that has the most options in Boston. So if you're a student coming here in the fall looking to sign a lease that starts September 1st, you're gonna have a lot of options. Whether you're planning ahead, you know, a couple months or you're trying to plan ahead, you know, one to two years in the future because people definitely do that when they plan on moving off campus. September 1st is gonna be the big date you probably want to be aware of living in Boston. Now, if you go to Northeastern, if you've talked to any other students or if you have friends who live off campus, Mission Hill and Roxbury, those are two of the most popular areas off campus. They're right next to Northeastern. It's easy to get to school. And they're also basically where you can get the most bang for your buck. These are not expensive parts of town compared to a place like Back Bay, Seaport, um, some parts of Fenway. So Mission Hill and Roxbury. These are two really big options for students. I have a lot of people who will look in Mission Hill and whether you want a place for yourself, if you want a studio or if you want just a one bed apartment for yourself, you'll find that. I mean, I was that kind of person. I didn't love having roommates. I did for a while, but it just wasn't always my style. And in Mission Hill, you will also see people renting in groups of three, four, five, six people because you can find these bigger units and sometimes a whole house that college kids will rent out together. Now, technically there are some rules about renting with more than five students in a unit, but my point being, Mission Hill is where you see a lot of the big rentals where you might have a whole group of friends that's five, six, seven people who wanna move in together. Mission Hill is where you can do that. Mission Hill is also where you have all the fraternities for Northeastern. So Mission Hill has a really big college kid population. Lots of frats out there. It's always very busy on the weekends. So Mission Hill, if you don't live there or if you're not moving there, you probably will at least have friends who live there if you go to Northeastern. Roxbury, again, very common choice for the people I work with and for all my friends when I was at Northeastern who were living off campus. Again, popular choice. The only really difference you wanna be aware of is that in Roxbury, you'll probably be taking the orange line 
and in Mission Hill, you obviously have the green line to go right to campus. But I mean, Northeastern is great because you have the green line and the orange line that are both very convenient. Now, some other options people also consider pretty often at Northeastern, Fenway, South End, Back Bay, these are also very close to campus. Um, they are the more expensive areas though. So you might look at these as kind of the nicer areas, but they're also more expensive. You're gonna see smaller units here. You're not gonna be able to rent, you know, a five bedroom unit in Back Bay or in Fenway. Um, that's why people go to Mission Hill. Fenway, Back Bay, South End, more expensive, smaller units. But if you want, you know, a more luxury kind of building, you will have a lot of these options in Fenway and in Back Bay. So in Fenway, right along Boylston, there are a bunch of these new, you know, modern full service buildings, um, the Harlow, Viridian, Van Ness, the Pierce, and in Back Bay, you got a bunch of stuff next to the Peru. So there's Avalon, 30 Dalton, 1 Dalton, Plus these days, I mean, Northeastern is kind of getting closer and closer towards the Peru because right now they're renting out space at the Weston and the Sheraton, I believe, for the freshmen. So they're, they're literally using these hotels as dorm space because they ran out of space on campus. So that might be a reason you're looking off campus because on campus options are getting limited these days as more kids go to Northeastern. Now, those big buildings are gonna be the most expensive choices in these areas. In Fenway and Back Bay, the cheaper options will be the older, you know, brownstone brick walk-up. So you'll see a lot of these in Fenway around Symphony and on Park Drive on the other side of the Fens. A lot of kids that will rent here and go to school. And in Back Bay, same thing, but along Com Ave, Beacon Street, and Marlboro is where you'll see you know, the typical traditional Boston brownstone, you will see these studios and one bed, sometimes two bed apartments here, they are more expensive. But again, those are some great choices that Northeastern kids will go with when they want to live off campus. Plus the great thing, if you're in an area like Back Bay or South End, if you're doing your co-op in Boston and if you have to go into, you know, downtown, the financial district, seaport, being in an area like Back Bay will kind of put you in the middle of downtown and campus. So you're kind of in the middle of both, easy to get to campus and also easy to go to work when you have your co-op cycle. Now in Fenway and Back Bay, you know, on the lower end of price, you might see studios going for $1,800 to $2,000 a month. On the higher end of price with these luxury buildings, expect that to be around $3,000 to $3,200 for a studio. One beds might be closer to $3,500, $4,000. And I mean, two beds could be upwards of $4,500 to $5,000. So that's what I mean when I say that these are the more expensive areas. But again, I mean, I have a lot of Northeastern kids I work with who will choose Fenway or Back Bay and also a place like Mission Hill or Roxbury, depending on, you know, where you want to live and just what you want to be close to around campus. Now, those are kind of the top, you know, most common areas that I see with people I work with at Northeastern. Um, and especially when I was there, I mean, all of my friends lived usually in Fenway or Mission Hill. You could go further off campus. So if you want to be more in the city, you know, downtown, West End, North End, you could definitely do that. You will be further away from campus but if you stick somewhere close to the green line or the orange line, that'll make it the easiest to get to campus just because commuting wise, you're gonna have to take the T to campus. You can't walk at that point. Similarly, if you wanna go further out west away from campus, you could go to Brookline or you could go to Jamaica Plain. Again, these will be the easiest options if you base it off of the green line or the orange line. So Brookline, you will have the green line, it goes to Heath Street. So it doesn't go through Brookline, but it's pretty close. Same thing for JP. So JP has the orange line, which ends at Forest Hills. So those are going to be the areas you might want to look at if you're going off campus in the opposite direction. Now, if you're looking at an area that I haven't mentioned so far, because at this point I might as well talk about all of Boston. So somewhere like 
Beacon Hill, Seaport, South Boston, or even Cambridge. Not as many Northeastern kids will go here because it makes it harder to use the T to get to school. So anywhere like Beacon Hill, Cambridge, Seaport, South Boston will be the red line or the silver line that will take you there. It's not gonna be the green line or the orange line. So it just kind of adds an extra step to the commute to campus, which is why those areas definitely aren't as common for kids at Northeastern. I mean, don't get me wrong, they're beautiful. They're really fun to check out if you have free time on the weekends, but they're not really convenient to get to Northeastern if that's where you're gonna be going, you know, five days a week for class. And you know, like I said at the beginning, this video is still relevant if you're considering purchasing. I mean, you might wanna look into the same areas I mentioned. You'd probably be surprised how many kids I talk to who are purchasing with the help of their parents, especially if they think their kid is gonna stay here after college for a job or go to grad school in Boston, or if they have more than one student who's gonna be in Boston for college, purchasing becomes a lot more common at that point in my experience from what I've seen working with clients here. Also very common for international students. So if home for you is much farther away, I have seen a lot more people take the route of purchasing so their family can come visit and have a comfortable place to stay when they're in Boston. And it's funny because usually the conversation has the same kind of flow every time. How long is Boston on the agenda? If it's for a year or two, then renting is usually the way to go. But if your kid's gonna be here for four or five years, or if you have more than one student in Boston, do you wanna pay their rent for five years because it's probably gonna be you paying it anyway and have nothing after five years? Or do you want to have equity and appreciation and actually own you know, the condo that your kid's gonna be living in? Now, is it more expensive than renting? Most of the time, it probably is. If you finance, if you have an HOA fee, taxes, insurance, it'll probably be more expensive than renting on a per month basis. But you have the aspect of appreciation so that if it goes up by a hundred grand over four years, you basically get your money back and even more once that time period is done. That's just an example, but think about it this way. How much are you gonna spend? How long is your student gonna be here? And are you going to recapture what you've spent when they move to a new city for five, six years, however long they're in Boston? That's what you should be thinking about. And renting obviously gives you the most flexibility. If you don't know how long Boston's on the agenda, if it might only be a year or two, renting is typically the best route to take. Purchasing could be an option, but at that point, renting usually makes a lot of sense. But really, you know, it just depends on you, your finances, your situation, and how long you think Boston is realistically on the agenda. So again, like I said at the beginning of this video, if you're moving to Boston, if your kid's coming here for school, if you're going to Northeastern, if you want some help with that process of signing a lease, buying a condo, figuring out the right neighborhood for you, let's get in touch, send me a text, send me an email, let's get to work and let's get you here to Boston. So that is gonna wrap it up for today. Thank you for watching. Hope you take care, have a great day, and I will see you in the next video right here on the Living Boston channel.